Flint City Council Committee as a whole will please come to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Could we have roll call, please? Council Member Gassman. Here. Seeley. Here. McGraw. Here. Allison. Here. Oder. Here. Connell. Here. O'Neill. Here. Thank you. Our first item for business tonight is to actually remind everyone if you haven't voted, turn off your TV, head out to the polls and vote. They're open till 8 o'clock. That's more important than sitting here and watching us tonight. So <laughs> now we'll move on to with item 1A which is the police department's contract for tasers body cameras. Chief Jurian. Mayor, Council, I had my presentation ready, but I forgot to vote, so I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else in your group can take over while you go vote. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. you, you, you live in the first ward and Julia really needs your vote. <laughs> I voted for Julia already. <laughs> All right, you guys, fo you folks had a uh, memo in your package. Um, the background of it is the City of Clinton Police Department is committed to the implementation of a body-worn camera program. Many people in departments in the state are waiting for the uh, legislature to pass down a law governing body cams and release, and we, we want to stay a little bit above that curve. We've had money designated for body cams, so we want to get it used and, and implemented as soon as we can with the most effective way we can. Um, <clears throat> We also want to continue use of taser, so uh, which is less uh, lethal use of force for officers. And the information in your package shows why we chose these people and why we use taser. Taser is a sole source provider to anyone using the, the non less than lethal electrical control systems. Um, they're in the body camera business now. And they're doing a very good uh, job of it. Um, Sergeant Jaco is our uh, contact with taser, and it's, it's, they're called Axon now. Our body cams. So we want to show you a quick little scenario of our body cams. We had four body cams for the last two months that we've been trying out. Um, so we had the officers wearing them on the street, and Sergeant Jacob is going to show you a quick snippet of what it looks like from our body cam when we look at it. Is ready by your help. <coughs> These are the actual body cams we're using now, so that's actual footage that we got today. Um, is there also Peterson? As you can see, the clarity in these cameras is really good. We can tell what he's reaching for. We can tell how the officer's interacting with the public, how the public's interacting with the officer. So we use these, even the test cameras, we've used them once a week at our staff meetings to go over how the officers are interacting with the public and how they're doing their job, just as a little quality control and, the, and the safety quality control to improve their safety, too. The other thing we want to show you about the Taser Axon program is that it, it includes an evidence.com um, component that we showed you in the, in the, uh, in the memo. With evidence.com, we put all our video evidence and all our recorded evidence in one spot. The county attorney gets an access port to it. Um, everything gets uh, dated and, and labeled instantly, and then we can pull it up and log it into evidence.com, we can pull it up like this, like Sergeant Jacob is doing now. We do it weekly at our staff meetings, but you can do it anytime you want. County attorney can do it. Uh, freedom of information, we can pull it up and, and redact stuff to, to release to the public, which this program also includes redaction, which a lot of the other programs don't include redaction. So we can, with freedom of information, whatever we are advised to, re to release by our city attorney, we can re release with redacted versions. So 
this is how it comes up when we pull it up in our, in our office. You can see the geographic location on the right of the screen. It shows you the video and then it shows you the geographic location because these cameras start a minute before, once the, act, the camera's activated, it goes back a minute from the activation. So you'll see it in the, in the whole geographic area, you'll see exactly where the officer was and where that camera was the whole time they were, it was videotaping. So there's lots of good things with this new system. One of the reasons I came before you people is because we need to uh, get creative with how we're financing it. Nowadays, uh, it's not the cost of the cameras, it's the cost of the storage. And our storage um, offered with this program is evidence.com, like I said, and it's unlimited storage. Right now it's three terabytes, but that should be enough for us. If it's not, they, they promise to let us go a little more. I've sent a um, purchase agreement to our city attorney for his review if this should go any farther. Uh, talk to the city administrator about it. Um, a few of the things I wanted you to know is that we are experiencing an increasing failure rate in our in-car camera system. It's about five years old, and five years is the limited life of these camera systems. So we, in the future, we also plan on going with the Axon or Taser for our in-car cameras. So ideally, all of our videos would be in the same spot. All our videos would be in evidence.com. All of our videos would be tagged and dated properly. It makes us for a much more efficient police department, makes for a much more efficient um, evidence uh, flow and custody of evidence. Um, I've looked at all the figures. We've done, Rick has, has uh, done research and in contact with Taser. Um, the only vendor that offers this redaction within their software is Taser. Redaction is a huge cost to us if we go in forward, if we go with body cams, because you can't release pictures of people. You have to have redacted uh, evidence for trial. Everything needs to be redacted. That's, many of these other companies charge additional for that, and it's really expensive. This is included with this vendor. The idea with this vendor is we're going to use our 48,000 hour or whatever number I submitted to you folks that we've already been committed to for cameras. We're going to use that for our first year, and then the remaining four years will be, will be uh, evened out. One of the beauty things about this five-year agreement with the Accent is we've talked to them, and if for some reason, God forbid, something happens and we can't <laughs> appropriate money in the future for this agreement, we are not held responsible. As long as we don't have any money appropriated for tasers or, or cameras, they won't hold us, hold us to this contract. So going forward, it's a you know win-win situation for us, in my opinion. But that's why I'm in front of you folks. I'm here for any questions. Can I ask a question? Sure. sure. Um, is this uh, the only uh, uh, group you talk to, or do you have you talked to other groups? In the last year, I've talked to WatchGuard. I've talked to Health. I've talked to many groups, and I've also looked at other departments. You know, uh -huh. Davenport did an RFP with 145 different companies, and they chose Axon. So. And this one was the most reasonable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, this one is the only one that offers the Evidence.com and the and the five-year system. And at, at 30 months, you get new cameras. You know, and it's the maintenance. It's the whole package mm -hmm. that, that attracts us. Okay. And then, I don't know if it was one or two years ago, we only had so much money in the budget, right? Right. And then <coughs> were we budgeting more in the next four to five years? Well, we would have to, I would have to come before you every, every year and, and ask for taser money or camera money. You know, body camera money, it's not the cost of the camera. Like I said, we can buy the cameras, but we have to be able to store it. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's a, a management, it's a maintenance type fee that we need. So sure. either, I, you know, I can come to you every year and ask for this money or we can get it right now for five years. So. I see. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, chief question for you with the the online storage and maybe this is a pack question I don't know do we still own that video when we store it online and if this contract ceases do we still have all the rights to the video or you would need to reserve that in any contract <coughs> with the vendor yes I, I don't believe that there would ever be a question as to that, especially okay. where there's a law enforcement purpose. There might be a contractual dispute, but I think any court would look at that as, as the city's evidence that it is it has in its files that collected by its police department. Uh, and I wouldn't, you know, I haven't reviewed this contract yet. The chief may have sent it to me. I was on the road today and I didn't see it yet, but I certainly wouldn't recommend that we enter into any agreement that didn't term that to be our property and yeah. our right to retrieve it. I'm just wondering if we ever are done, how, how do we get our video back? It's been, that question's been answered. I mean, Davenport okay. has it, Chicago has it, Big C, uh, Pittsburgh has it, Philadelphia has it. The pr your video is proprietary. Everything that okay. you have is your video. 
when you load it up into the cloud, it's yours. If you ever break the contract, they give you opportunity to get that off the cloud. Okay. But you have to find a place to put find it. Find another place to store right. it, basically. But okay. it's in it's in the agreement that you'll you'll read. But yeah, they've they've, they've dealt with that issue. Perfect. Similar to your accounting perfect. software and all that. It's all your right. information. I assume I it's just like your yeah. phone they cloud and stuff. Video and file an appeal, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They turn around and they sell it to cops and they no. show yeah. it over and over. <laughs> well, that's right. Or, I mean, or, or live PD. Who knows? Yeah. Live PD, yeah. I mean, is this a secure site? You know, could it get hacked? I would, never mind. Let's not go down that road. But. You don't want to go down that road because yeah. I'm not sure there's any site in the world. <laughs> yeah. well, we learned that with Equifax. Didn't we? So, um, okay. Thank you. Councilmember O'Neill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I guess I have more of a question for City Administrator. Or, do we do an RFP for this? No, we did not. But they went out and got quotes, and then they leveraged uh, Davenport's RFP that had 145 different vendors that provided quotes back. That's what I thought. I thought we had, okay, I'm, I'm in all support of, of getting these, but there's a process that we, we follow. We get an RFP, and we get to review that and look at the contracts and the, the RFPs ourselves also. Why did we bypass it? Well, the RFP, I thought about an RFP. I thought I talked to our people in the finance, and, and the, the problem with the RFP was th this is the only camera system that offers evidence.com and the, fi the five year program, along with Taser, which we need Tasers too. So we tied it in with Taser, which we already, everybody is still propri proprietor of Taser. So we tied the cameras in with Taser. Okay. Well, <coughs> Yeah, I, I guess when we do anything else, we, we insist on a RFP so we have a comparison to look at and some some validation for spending $190,000. <coughs> I mean, we went and got RFPs for garbage cans. And I don't know. I'm, I'm, ha I'm having a problem with that, Chief. I mean, it, it, with all due respect to Davenport, uh, they may not – look at their RFPs or they may not be that due diligence of, of spending the taxpayer's money. Well, the RFP would, would is not just for body cameras. It would be for body cameras, for tasers, which is a sole proprietor, and it would be for storage, evidence storage for the whole time. I understand, the system. but that could all be written in the <coughs> RFP. I mean, five years ago, the, or two years ago, this may have been the only company that does that. I don't know that. And there may be, may there be a company in the uh, the state of Washington that does that now. I don't know. And when I'm spending $200,000, I, I think I want to know. Council Member Seeley. No, Your Honor. Um, the, now you guys took and I, I believe you and the city administrator and Anita took and compiled data and did did your own comparison, is that correct? Absolutely. Took data from what Davenport had and looked into costs and stuff, which um, I understand completely with this <coughs> member O'Neill saying. Our, I number, think our numbers are saving money. If yeah, we no, I, I mean, perhaps uh, if you presented us with that kind of analysis, that would be helpful. Doesn't have to be right now either. I have it right now. Oh, perfect. This is just for the taser. And then we got copies that we send it to. <coughs> That's what we pay to for the taser every year. And what we're going to be saving because we don't have to replace the taser and they replace <coughs> it as part of the program. And I have it for the body cams too. Okay. So you got taser, body cams, and then the. Uh, oh, you get looked at storage too. Yeah. I, I guess my point here is that I, I'll be real frank with you. That, so when we do a committee of the whole and this, all this information you provided us was the best information I feel I've gotten in a long time. I, I enjoyed this. It was thorough. It, it explained everything very well. 
and and I felt felt good about it. Um, I I feel like you've done your due diligence to to the point where I'm personally comfortable with it. Um, if we have time, we can we can bring more to you all if you need. This is, would move it. You know, if we get a motion from you tonight to move this to a, a council meeting, there's plenty of time to show you the paralysis of analysis because. Trust me, Bill has a lot of numbers that we went over, Anita, uh, the chief and I went over, and it really leads you to one one decision decision point. Council Member Connell. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I can see exactly where Councilman O'Neill is going with this. I guess I have a stark contrast from that because there are times we pull smaller projects or smaller RFPs um, when there are many competitors that can could do a project. Um, the key word here, and I've pulled one that was a sold sor sole source project and had um, a big issue with that because we did not follow previously the proper procedures. I feel there is a, a, a justification here. Um, anytime you do a sole source justification, you have to have that evidence of showing why they're a sole source and um, the acts, acts on and, um, and tied in with the evidence storage with the tasers and the body cams does show that. So if it makes you feel more comfortable, um, and trust me, I see a lot of sole source projects um, on the federal arena, and um, this justification seems to be there. Okay. The, the, the issue is, is not what past experience has been. Uh, to me, the issue is this. It's great that the staff got together and they all decided that this was okay. But at the end of the day, the burden of doing the right thing, doing the wrong thing, or doing the thing that's supposed to be done in the correct manner lies on the shoulders of the city council. We don't get to shun that off because somebody did due diligence ahead of time. The fact of the matter is, is that we should have this information and look it over and have an RFP. I don't know if there's a company out there, and I have no reason to believe that this is not a good company but when we start sh shortcutting stuff this is where you know yeah well it is yeah this is not this is not the proper way to, to bring this forward we should have had an rfp we should have had some input into what was going to be in the rfp we should have got the information back had a chance to look it over and then took the chief's recommendation and move forward getting this on friday afternoon and you know this has been in the works for almost two years and so to shortcut it to me is just uh, and there's I don't understand why we're doing that and uh, is, I think it is a shortcut and uh, you know I'm, I'm I guess I'm taking the responsibility to look at this and say you know I I'm not ready to, to spend a hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars on a Tuesday night without any information Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so, Chief, just for clarification, just for myself, you're, so what you're saying here and why you're presenting us with just one uh, option is pretty much because they're the only ones that have the total package, correct? Absolutely. Okay. They, um, they interface with our Zerker. They, it, it's, it's, it's the only one that does that. I mean, I'm sure there's other sure. ones, but it would be additional cost That's to have them thing. integrate with our system. And okay. Sure. Um, based on that, and, and I agree with um, – council member Seeley here that this was very thorough in my opinion and um, done very well and I I'd like <coughs> to make the motion that we move this forward second a motion and a second so now we'll have further discussion <coughs> if anybody's got any other questions or concerns <coughs> council member Allison would you um, provide the information for us in next week's packet yes Chief. absolutely thank you could we that's fine Thank you, Your Honor. Um, City Attorney, I, I know you're going to do a review on it, right? You just received it today. So you're going to kind of yeah, review I'm that exactly contract sure for us. When you, when you, Chief, when did you send it? This afternoon I sent it to you. Okay, very good. I might have been in the car already heading over, but uh, I will definitely take a look. W will you have time to have a review and have an opinion by the next council meeting? I think that should be no problem. If it is, I will, if I see major issues with the contract or something like that, I will let Matt and the Chief know and 
we'll get some communication to the council and the mayor about it and if we need to delay it we will but I I if I'm thinking of the type of contract it probably is I doubt it I think it should be no problem well, remember one topic is <coughs> who owns the the actual video as far as getting access mm -hmm. to it if the contract ceases <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Seeley will call about it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that it's Council organized. Member, Council Member O'Neill. If uh, this is where we're going to proceed, could we have it brought back for a vote on the 12th or the 19th of December instead of just a week from now? Or the 28th November for a vote? Well, I could also take time if you want. We could sit down and go over this on a separate time as much detail we have a lots of numbers we'd be happy to do that um, with you one-on-one -on -one. so I guess I'd like you to make that motion I'd like to make a, a motion amended to have it come up for a vote on the 28th the meeting for the November 28th we, we have a motion Second. to bring it to the next council meeting and during the discussion there's an amendment being made to change the date from the 14th to the 28th okay, that I can oh, retract my motion. You need a second to that. Yeah, I second okay. it. I, I didn't That's hear fine. I That's mean, fine. we can all get some information sure. between okay. there and then and uh -huh. be happy with it. Okay. okay if, there, if there's no other discussion on the amendment of changing the date, we'll have a vote on that. Council Member Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Allison? Yes. Oder? Yes. Connell? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Gassman? Yes. So it'll come back on the 28th, so everybody has time to get all the information that they need. And now, is there any other any other discussion before we have an actual final vote to move this forward to the 28th? And it'll be moved forward to the council meeting, correct? We're to okay. the council meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plus, you'll have all the information in advance of that. So there still is, a, if there's still an issue with it, you can still you know make changes to it at the, at the, on the 28th. Yes, sir. Okay. If there's no other discussion, then we'll have a roll call vote then, please. Council Member Gassman? Yes. Seely? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Allison? Yes. Oder? Yes. Connell? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Okay, we'll move on to item number two, which is the Community Development Block Grant, the 2018 <laughs> Rehabilitation Pilot Project. Matt. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Council, what I'm looking for is a motion to move this forward to a Council meeting to publish a request for qualifications to obtain the technical services of an element to be able to write this description up, which would be a pilot program, never done before in Iowa, where we'd request $500,000 that would become in a revolving loan to use over a three-year period to take houses that we procure as a city fully gut them for $65,000, use five to 10,000 to help with folks with LMI to get a loan. They move in and they have to have it as a family residency for a minimum of five years. The sale of that house then take that money, it goes back into the program to rehab others. And the first step in all this is to move forward to be able to publish in the paper the request for qualifications. This is sort of a sole source too, but there might be others that step forward. The, the, the leader of the pack right now is ECIA that would actually step forward. But there could be others that we'll look at. And this would be not only once they submit for the, the revolving loan, but once they get it, they would act as just as they do with the CDBG houses today. They would coordinate and, and be the, the, the lead for the city to find the property, acquire the property, rehab through contractors of the property. We would, BNS would be integrated with them. And then they'd also work to find the, the families that would qualify that would actually be able to then get their first mortgage to be able to then live in that house and then close the deal and then move on to the next one. There's a lot there, so <coughs> some of your questions, definitely please fire away. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so I think it's a great idea to be a really nice uh, thing to get going. I know we've been talking and working on a few different types of programs. I guess the one thing that jumps out to me is there are certain homes uh, maybe that are, say, a two-story and fairly large that are pretty dilapidated $65,000 might not go yep. that far. No. Maybe gets us through the first floor and 
but we, that's we had, it. We so, had that discussion when um, we were talking about yeah. it. It's probably going to have to be a one-story home. Over yeah. <clears throat> because it, it's a total gut. The drywall, right. the wall, plaster comes out. The you're talking electrical. I mean, everything's replaced. How so. do you get, you know, what's our criteria that we're going to try to base that off of? Is, is ECIA thinking that yep. they maybe would help with that as well? or Definitely. And what we'd look at is, you know, we're using as a going in because that's six homes, which doesn't sound like a lot. But we could always narrow it to five and add a little more. And, and we also looked at instead of spending demolition monies to be able to take some of that demolition money, mm -hmm. apply it because all we're doing is creating a very nice home for someone that will then you know be lived in and not be dilapidated that we have to tear down. So I think once they submit and if they get this pilot, I think we'll have a lot of time where we can come back to you at another cow and discuss like the internal um, mechanisms of how it all would work, how you guys can have. A vote in that as far as what we're looking at we'd probably have them come back and bring there's specific areas that we've outlined specifically for the urban revitalization area that those houses would in that area that we'd be looking for to go after to rehab and then we come back and give you updates and say this is what we're looking to do what do you think should we move on this one should we do a two-story and pay 80 for that two-story or should we just stick to the one story so there'll be a lot more interaction with you guys as we but the first step of course is getting this and it's, mm -hmm. it sounds positive from the Iowa Economic Development um, Group co company corp um, so that's why we want to move forward with this piece now to, to move on that but <coughs> definitely and the urban revite is a piece that we're also doing a lot of discussion on and that's going to be saved for a <coughs> another cow but very soon right um, very soon. we're in conversation <laughs> with yeah, yeah 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 and that's and, and that's where i need to get you guys a lot more facts for that so we can discuss abatement for folks that do some repairs and things to their house and they don't get punished they actually get rewarded right um and th this is not he's not talking about anything new we discussed no. this and this approved it our but it, it was when jessica mm -hmm. was leaving and the ball got dropped so right, we got the ball i've been prodding <laughs> matt we found on, the ball again yeah. it was yeah. just misplaced yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, it needs to be reinflated. A little yeah, bit. yeah. Deeply. Well, I've been working on some committees along with Matt, and uh, along with this process, I think we should also go through the process of using some of those groups that we work with mm -hmm. to talk yes. about how you maintain a home, how you finance a home, how you, you know, how bills. you make your payments. Yes. So home I think that's uh, yeah, yeah, general, Huge. general yeah. information. Yeah. But I think that's a great start because we've been struggling with how do we get this moving. Yep. Council Member McGraw. Who will be the contractors that will work on this or who will yep. do the work? So the way it, it will work is just like it did with the smaller CDBGs for the 25999 ECIA will then look at the contractors, have them come in, make the bids on each and every house that's going to be done, and then they'll select the, the right contractor for the right price for that individual house. So it won't be like in the past where you have one contractor doing them all. It will probably be broken out because they'll, they'll bid for that house to say, we want these specific things done. They'll come in and say, this was what it will cost. Even though I know we just said ballpark is 65000 But we'll specify when we go in that house to see what we need to have done. And then they'll, they'll make a bid towards that to do that work. And then ECIA would make the decisions based on our guidance, what parameters we put in place. So there will be lo local contractors? Yes, yes. So who's going to act as the general? So overall, it'd be ECIA. ECIA. That would be the general, just mm -hmm. like with the lead abatement. So they're going to. I mean, this involves daily. Yep. I mean, you have to be on the job almost every day. Yep. They would, and that's the technical assistance. They piece. would probably be the construction management mm -hmm. versus the firm general. versus the general. Mm -hmm. The general is going to be your be ABC contractor yeah. that's going to bid it from right. here or Davenport or Dubuque or wherever they may. They may not just be from here, um, because ECIA does put this out in their right. surrounding yeah, markets. Um, just like they do with their other gr other, mm -hmm. other grants. Well, if we're going to go get all the bids individually by ourselves, we're kind of acting as the general. The general would normally do that. The general contractor runs the job, gets the bids, decides how. So who's going to be – is this stuff we're going to have to figure out? We can, we can definitely – what I see is kind of a marriage together because we need to give them direction and guidance. We yeah. need to be able to have because somebody inside. ECIA is not going to be here every day, I don't think. Well, unless they it's said they would be. Te technical well, they service is 8000 per house. So do they have yeah, experience? They already do it yeah. for the yeah. programs they, they, we have. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they, do, they do have experience. Mm -hmm. In general contracting? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do they really? We've been yeah. doing it for years. Yeah. For, for like the lead abatement piece, as we move forward to do that, they actually have a gentleman that that's what his 
okay. career yeah, wise that's going to be down here. Okay. Up in Evan. Yep. And then, <coughs> how are we going to determine? Okay, so we let's say there's property that we either have to <laughs> demo or rehab, right? What are we going to do to determine what's feasible? Yeah. Well, it's going to have to have an inspection. Okay. So, for example, if you're driving on Bluff Road tonight and you went by Ashford, you know the the house on the corner. It, we actually have emergency demo set up for that one. I don't know if you've seen it's kind of a listing. Uh, so that would be one where we probably wouldn't fix it up. So we're going to have to have criteria too to get in the homes, to check them out, and that's the part we've been talking about since I've been here is the the timing mechanism because typically we're getting to a home when it's too far gone. Mm -hmm. So we got to get to the point where we can actually get to the house. And we've had several, just in the last month, individuals who've come up and said, I would love to quick claim deed my home to you that's still not gone too far, mm -hmm. but we haven't been able to have a program set in place. So that would incorporate that as well. Okay. So what are we going to do if we know we invest $70,000 and the house is only worth fifty? Is it is that still feasible? I hope not. <laughs> well, that, that's yeah. where I think the house that's has to be determined. Yeah. There has to be an so evaluation. So, is there going to be appraisals done? Yeah, the whole, it'll be just, just <laughs> yes. I'm not. Since <laughs> 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 you mentioned it, I think it'd be the normal process. Or, or a realtor involved? There's yes. somebody. Well, Cody, I think that's where it goes back to <laughs> the technical services of ECA. They're going to look at the houses and determine the, the potential of them after an inspection whether the house is viable and how much it could cost compared to what its value yeah. is. Because we aren't going to put money more into a house than what it's actually worth. Yeah. You don't spend $80,000 on a house that re would sell for $30,000. That's what worries me. No, okay. it's not that's not going to because there's better ways to spend our money. That's exactly. So I think there's a lot of things that yeah. you got to figure out, little things. Oh. Cause, and then uh, how do we determine the sale price? But I think that's what we'd work in concert with, possibly, us with ECI and then realtors as well to determine well, what is the fair market value. I, I think that's where the part that we're asking, we're needing to have a contract <coughs> and have someone for technical services. Those are the people that would be answering a lot of these questions. Whoever actually you know, applies for this, whether that, I know it will be ECI, but I don't know if there's gonna be anybody else or not. But they are the ones that have that discussion with. Yeah, and, and we'll do one first at it to start it because that's why we have for three years so that we do one and we get the process down correct mm -hmm. and so we don't go afoul because what we don't want to do is sink a bunch of money that yes it's a grant that we get for free but it's still state money that we want to make sure that we actually get you know a benefit for a family that gets a nice home and that we actually have a few dollars to put back and then roll to the next okay as well. I have two more questions yes. is there a match on the city's no, part not on this one there is not okay and then um, oh, I forgot what the question was I got you a match. Well, uh, well, well, let me have let Council Member O'Neill ask his question. Oh, Maybe you'll think of. Yeah, I'll think of it. Council Member O'Neill. Okay. Are we? Well, that's part of it. Are we going to be using any of our LMI funds to do any of this? No, not at this time. The only thing that we talked okay. about briefly was dipping into the demolition funds because we were going to use those to tear the house down. Mm -hmm. In theory, that we could use those to apply to be able to have a little additional uh, fundage if we have to um, procure the home. Like if somebody mm -hmm. wants to sell it to us for five thousand. We could use the demo funds to buy that with the five thousand. Okay. I remember that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you just need a little time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Uh, since this is LMI and such, uh, when we did the lead abatement and, and everything, we there was deed restrictions tied to the property. We just dealt with that because when the, yep. the lady mm -hmm. passed away, unfortunately. Yep. Is this going to be the same, same situation? Yeah, and that's the five-year piece where the family has to move in, and even if they move, it has to go to another family, and it can't be rented for that at least five-year period. And if that's if you if you think that's too light, we can also look relook that too and see do we want to have a longer period of time for that. Well, I think they're typically set up as you've got to pay Three back years. X dollars if you sell it within X yeah, amount right. of time, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. or if you sell it over X price in X <coughs> amount of time mm -hmm. or something like that. Because the last thing we want is we don't want to get okay, here's your house, 70 grand, and then a year later they turn around and sell it for 90. Right, um, and rent it out. Yeah, and rent it out, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Not that renting's bad, but we, we, we're just trying to look in the, the area mainly is from uh, 9th Avenue North over to Bluff, down Bluff to 7th Avenue South over to the river. It's that area there that we've identified that we want to get into and, and work on those, those spots there. Same area we're looking for um, Habitat for Humanity as well for mm -hmm. housing. 
Any other questions? Is there areas by the Oh, so basically up at 9th Avenue North where you come off the River River Drive, straight across over to 4th, uh, North 4th Street, down to, and then take a right up to Bluff by mm -hmm. Ashford, run Bluff all the way down to 7th Avenue South, mm -hmm. 7th Avenue South all the way down the river, and then back up. That's the area that's actually been identified as the urban revite, that piece you're talking about with the maps. I found that map mm -hmm. um, that we're talking on the other topic. That that's the area we want to zoom in on um, to be able to to be able to work well, in that. For years we had all this CBD stuff up on the pump, so mm -hmm. it didn't, didn't need to get out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Is there a motion to move this um, forward? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. No Contingent further. on a lot more things being oh. figured out. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so, so this motion is just only to publish the RFQ <laughs> in the paper right. to mm -hmm. get the feedback, and then there, then we'll be able to have a lot more discussions yeah. once we get the, the technical assistance. Well, all good questions, but there's actually going to be more help to answer yes. them with the, another person on board. Okay. okay. So if there's no other discussion, could we have roll call then, please? Council Member Gassman. Yep. Seely? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Allison? Yes. Oder? Yes. Connell? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Thank you. Okay, item number three <coughs> the rescheduling of the December 26, 2017 City Council meeting to December 19, 2017, and canceling the December 26, 2017 Committee of the Whole. Traditionally, that last meeting of the year, we never really do any business other than approve bills. licenses pay bills and the simple thing and so I was suggesting a 930 meeting for about 10 minutes on the 19th to actually um, take care of the end of the year business second we have to have a motion for I make the motion I thought you made the motion I, I can't make any motion <laughs> I just read what's here in front of me <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second Is there any other discussion the 19th, the 19th is a Tuesday. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday morning. At 9.30. That's mm -hmm. fine with me. Or does it say 9.30? Right. Uh, in, in, in the mayor's mouth. It came out of my mouth. Yeah. 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 You wrote See? it. Okay. Yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it didn't make it to the paper here. If it came by telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're waiting for that to come in. <laughs> so could we have roll call vote on that, please, then? Council Member McGraw. Yes. Allison. Yes. Oder. Yes. Connell. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Gasman. Yes. Seeley. Yes. Thank you. And item number four is the canceling of the July 2nd. Oh, January 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> January. Getting ahead of yeah. what, 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 you, 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 you said January. Yeah, yeah I said January. January. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did not say July. I said January. <laughs> I'm reading it right here. It says January. <laughs> <laughs> the canceling of the January 2nd. 2018 I even got the 18 right <laughs> committee of the whole meeting now Matt would you like to explain that one since I took the last one certainly it, it's you know to help all those people when Iowa and Iowa State win their bowl games we probably need to have some time <laughs> off on January 2nd uh, no it's just as we get into the new year I'm gonna be able to get all the stuff on the cows towards the end of December and we'll have plenty of time in January to hit those and I thought it'd be a good thing as we roll in the new year not to have that um, right out of the box in case people want to take a little vacation etc so I'll make, I'll make the ma motion. Second. Motion. Do you have a second? <laughs> second. Okay. Yeah. Could we have roll call then, please? Mm -hmm. Council Member McGraw. Yes. Allison. Yes. Oder. Yes. Connell. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Gasman. Yes. Seely. Yes. Let, let's present this first. Okay. Next item is the city assessor, and I'm going to turn it over to Matt to, to start this off. Thank you, Your Honor. And, and what I want to do, council members, is basically just give you the background facts and for the folks in the audience and those that are viewing, just so you have all the pertinent data and then we can <coughs> go into conversation. So um, first one, current city assessor is retiring November 30th, 2017. The city assessor is not a city council appointment, but rather an appointment of a conference board that consists of the school, the county, and of the city, which each entity basically having one vote. The assessor's office, the city or county, are independent offices governed by a board rather than by the city or county. An examining board, myself, Gary DeLacy, and Scott Judd, has been created to find a replacement for the outgoing city assessor, and the examining board will provide a hiring recommendation to the conference board. 
The examining board would like to have the council's decision on the disposition of the city assessor's office prior to moving forward. We feel this is important because if those that are interviewing for the city assessor job, there shouldn't be a cloud looming over if the office is going to remain open or not. Um, the city council can choose to do nothing today and continue on as, as is with the city assessor office, or the city council could motion to choose to repeal the ordinance which established the city assessor's office. According to Iowa Code Chapter 441.1, a city desiring to abolish the office of the city assessor shall repeal the ordinance establishing the office of the city assessor. Notify the county conference board <coughs> in the affected taxing districts. Provide the transfer of appropriate records and other matters and provide for the abolition of the respective boards and termination of terms of office of the assessor and members of the respective boards. The, um, Abolishing, sorry, abolishing of the city assessor's office shall take effect on 1 July following notification, unless otherwise agreed on by the affected conference boards. If notification of proposed um, abolishment is made after January 1st, sufficient funds shall be transferred from the city assessor's budget to fund the additional responsibility transferred to the county assessors <coughs> for the next fiscal year. Of course, another fact, combining the offices would, of course, double the workload because that's about 53% of the uh, city is part of the assessing and also IO code chapter 441.8 parentheses 8 in the event of removal registry re resignation death or removal from county of said assessor the conference board shall proceed to fill the vacancy by appointing an assessor to serve the unexpired term in the manner provided in section 441.6 until the vacancy is filled the chief deputy shall act as the assessor and in the event there is no deputy in the case of the county's the auditor shall act as the assessor. In the case of cities having an assessor, the city clerk shall act as assessor. I want my taxes lowered. <laughs> <laughs> so the recommendation is to determine disposition of the city assessor's office. If the council takes no action, the city assessor office remains and will move out on looking for a city, re city assessor replacement. If the council decides to abolish the office, a motion will need to be made to begin the process to repeal the ordinance establishing the office of the city assessor. Ladies and gentlemen. I'll go first. Okay. I'm not in support of uh, not having a city assessor. I think, uh, you know, we have an aging uh, group of people in Clinton and uh, every dollar bill counts to them. I don't feel that uh, we want to give up our right to have them you know challenge assessments and that and have the county decide that for us I think that's our duty as uh, uh, city council people for the residents I've never seen one document that substantiated any kind of significant cost savings in doing this and uh, as far as I know uh, we've done a, a great job <coughs> with our assessments we've had a few problems but in overall years past and all the things that have happened to us that we've done a good job and we've got uh, uh, enough things on our plate to be dealing with without creating another one by changing this city assessor to the county assessment position so I won't be supporting it any other comments do we have public comments first uh, I want to open it up here to see if anybody else has any comments and then we can actually open it up to the audience if they have comments Nobody else has any comments? Time passes on each of them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in the audience so far, I have the only person that wished to speak was Carolyn Tallett. Thank you. If, you. if you'd say who you are for the record. I will. I'm Carolyn Tallett. I live in Ward, uh, Ward 3. And yeah. Carolyn, could you pull the North mic, mic yes down? Yes, sir. 1315 North 3rd Street. When I understood that uh, the current assessor was retiring, I thought it was the perfect time to look at this. So if that's what we're doing, that is a good thing. Because over the state, whenever assessor has been retiring and the population has been declining, they have been combining the offices. And as we know, our population has been declining. I'm a big fan of less government, unless it's essential services. And so it fit right in with my philosophy to examine this a little more. I will say it's a very confusing 
uh, situation. And unless you've looked into it, I mean, it, it, it really is. I, I made many phone calls to figure out this position and how it relates to the general public. And I think the general public has a very hard time understanding their appeal rights, um, their ability to, um, to be heard. And I have been heard before, and I know they did a good job. But at that point, I was just at sea. I didn't understand it. Um, I didn't understand it a lot better when I started making phone calls, the budgeting issues, um, the oversight, which I do believe you do have oversight, but I don't think it's great oversight, if you want the truth. Um, but at this point, I just spoke because I am the one that did the petition. I think had it not been me, there would have been other people who would have looked at this at this time, because it's the perfect time to do it. Um, I'm only sorry that we weren't able to, I guess there's a double shot here. I don't want to denigrate the office at all. I don't want to take away from what John Moreland has done for all of these 40 years. Um, I just think looking at good government, we should examine it. And I'm glad that you, you're doing that now. Um, I think it will probably still come up you know, in the future. Um, but I did want to at least be here and in case there was something that you know, was I needed to say. But uh, petitions are still ongoing. Um, I understood we had to get uh, 1,500 petitions. Uh, that's a lot of names. And so we know you have the ability to make the decision on your own. And whatever you decide, I understand. I do think it, it, it merits some consideration. Um, taxpayers don't like, I guess if I asked one taxpayer if they wanted to pay more taxes, they'd say no, you know, you know that too. Um, so, if you're doing the examining and you're looking at it thoroughly, I think, you know, I can live with whatever decision you make, but I do think this issue will not go away. I think it will continue, and I surely wouldn't want to take <coughs> a, a job based on the fact that it could be eliminated at some time or through a vote. Um, and my regret is that and we had to start it before Mr. Moreland retired. My second regret is we couldn't have had it on this ballot today to save money. So that's, that's my position. It's just less government. I think it's a great opportunity now. And I've said that, so I'll sit down. And I'd love to listen to what you have to say. Right. Thank you. Can, I, can we ask her a question? Yeah. Yes. Carolyn, I have a question for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're fine. You're fine. And I just want to agree with you that um, <coughs> in my mentality, less government is better as well. Um, totally agree with you there. Listen to AM radio all day. So, um, <laughs> You not have uh, FM? <laughs> <laughs> I prefer AM. AM. <laughs> you spoke about the appeal process, and <laughs> I'm trying to understand how combining with the county is going to correct or eliminate any confusion on how that works. You have a board now uh, um, that Mr. Moreland has in his office, the assessor has. I don't want to yes. talk names because it's positions yeah, we're talking about, talk honestly. The assessor, yeah. um, there is, they, he has a board yep. that he reports to. And then, as I understand, there are appeal rights that go further up. Yes. And I know citizens who have gone to the state for their appeals and had to pay as much as three and four yeah. thousand dollars for yeah. um, their appeals. It doesn't seem to be real responsive government no. to me, well, frankly. I, I agree. I'll agree with you there. Um, that would be the exact same process with the county. Um, that would not change. Yes. Th okay. There would be less. I would assume there would be. I don't know the configuration, yeah. but I would assume there would not be that board. No, there's a county board. <coughs> exactly. So it would just be a different board you'd right. go to. And so they, the board, the purpose of that board is... So you start your appeal on a local level, mm -hmm. and you present them with the facts, and you show them, okay, this is why I'm appealing my assessment, and that board is made up of different professionals from the community and non-professionals, right. and they take that information and they decide, have you presented your case? 
um, is, this, is this assessment that we have incorrect is, and is your assessment correct? That board has the option to either accept it or modify the current mm -hmm. assessment. Um, and if you don't agree with it, then you go on to the next level, which is the state. Um, that process will be the exact same no matter if you have a county or city assessor, just so you're aware of that. I am aware uh, of that. Okay. Um, and I just want, want you to know, or I guess I want everybody to know, right now the, we have a levy for the city, for the city assessor's office, and a levy for the county. And for 2017, the county levy is 45.45755. And the cities is 0 .48520. So on a hundred thousand dollar house that's assessed at a hundred thousand, your taxable value is 55 some percent because you get the rollback, and then you apply that out, it equates to a dollar 58 difference in cost. Mm -hmm. So that's subject to annual change on the county's behalf and the city's behalf. The conference board helps sets the budget for the city assessor. Right. Um, our the city assessor costs have been a little bit higher um, because of the ADM appeals and we've had to pull in guys like Pat and uh, um, appraisers which have cost a lot of money um, which money well spent as you know the result of that so um, but when I start thinking about it and kind of re starting at ground zero and looking just let's look at the base and a dollar fifty-eight a year on a hundred thousand dollar house. To me, that's not a compelling reason, cost-wise, um, to eliminate the office. Um, and and frankly, I feel that the majority of the unhappiness with the office is not because of the office, but because of a person. And I don't want to eliminate an office because people didn't agree with one particular person. Does that make sense? I understand what you're saying. I mm -hmm. mean, mine wasn't with the person, um, yeah. but but I do understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, it, I, I'm an appraiser, so I deal with both offices every day. Right? And they're both very good offices to work with. Um, but I'm having a hard time because once this is abolished, it's done, and it you know it it's it's rolled into the the county, and it'll never go mm -hmm. back. But I guess t to me, if we're really just concerned about saving money and limiting costs, the discussion should go a lot further than this. We should be talking about, we don't need a city administrator, we just need a county administrator. We don't need a city police department, we just need a countywide police, you know what I'm saying? There's lots of different offices that you know can be combined that we're not even having that discussion. Um, and this is one that a lot of cities have done, and I get that. There's eight left, I believe, mm -hmm. right, right there. Sioux City, I think they just had this discussion. Last and night. Last and night, I think. And they yeah. And, mm -hmm. and they actually elected again. And it is funny because I read the article, and they're like, we're talking about the city assessor's office in Sioux City again because they've talked about it just like we are mm -hmm. over and over and over. But the, the consensus and the final decision there was to, to keep that office. So... Um, and, and the only other, and I'll quit babbling here in a second, I apologize. <laughs> no, it, um, it seems to be your purview, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> she must watch us a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I know I've always liked you, but I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, your three minutes are up. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, you know, Clinton is, we're, we're, we have been declining in population that's fine, but honestly, if that's going to be our reason to do it, we need to start having the discussions on everything else. And I think our goal here is, that I, and I, I really feel like we're on an upward trend here in Clinton. Things have, we've kind of hit, hit our lull, I hope. And, and so we want things going up. We've got a lot of development going on, a lot of complex properties. We have a very complex uh, tax base. So is now the time? to eliminate that office forever and, and combine it when the, the data doesn't show that there's any major benefit to the taxpayer. I think any time, you know, we're eliminating an office, we're eliminating a salary. Um, I think the staff, you know, rather, I can't speak for the county what they want to do about that, and I'm sure that they would keep a staff. Um, 
there are, there are some cost savings to this as far as I can see. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something to think about. Um, I just, I know that um, there is a position on, on this committee that oversees it, has a little salary. Um, I, I think there's some, some cost savings and you know, it, I see what you're saying as well. Yeah. Um, and it's for heads smarter than me to look over. So you know, you're one of seven and, and whatever you decide we'll live with. I, it's just the right opportunity, I think. Yeah, I agree, the timing, if we're going to take that action, yeah. now is the yeah. time. And we're not the only, as you know, we're not the only one who's gone through this. Yeah. When the legislature allowed for it, it's my understanding that they allowed for cities over 25,000 to ha say it's that it's again. It's actually Matt. over 10,000. Over yeah, 10, okay, so we're not close. To, yeah. No, we're not there. Okay, thanks Let's for that. We're not there. Yeah, no. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I appreciate you that coming up and stuff. I, I am concerned that if the, the uh, council, and I don't know what the council's pleasure is going to be tonight, to keep the office, that if the petition uh, continues, um, it does undermine our ability to get a quality candidate. So that is a concern that's weighing in the back of my right. head. Um, although I, I, I am uncertain that it's in the best interest of the city to, to eliminate the office at that mm -hmm. time and at this time. And I'm unsure that most people citing the petition would fully understand um, everything involved with, with that office. As you've said, you've had to go out and do a lot of research yourself and I know most people don't. They rely mm -hmm. on us to make the decisions that they don't want to deal with. Um, and I've done a lot of research on it and I've talked with a lot of folks on it. Um, I've gone back and forth. I've had my ups and downs and what really tears me apart is I'm exactly like you are. Less government's better. Darn it. <laughs> so why don't I want this office <laughs> gone? But there's, there's things that are, that make me uncomfortable with eliminating the office okay. at this time. So, sure. But I really appreciate you coming and talking. Oh, thank you. Okay. Any other comments from the council? Can I just make one comment? Uh, this involves just my experience with lots of local assessors. Um, I can tell you that uh, citizens have a, have a hard time trying to get their claim litigated once they get out of the local area. If they're once they're beyond either the county assessor or the city assessor, that's when all of those things that Mrs. Talent was talking about happen, and that's where all those expensive things happen as you're going up on the appeals. But the experiences from county to county and city to city in the case of city assessors is radically different. Some assessors are very approachable and their boards are very approachable and they ready, readily make adjustments when people come in with valid arguments and others are very rigid and very unyielding. And so for what it's worth, whatever the council decides to do, the actual person, whether it be the county assessor or the city assessor, that's what makes the most difference. If you have a highly qualified, highly intelligent person in the office who's somewhat flexible and, and approachable from the public, it makes a big difference. Just having been in front of those boards many, many times as an attorney, that's what I would add to the discussion. I don't have anything to say about whether it makes sense or not economically. So, When I did it, I had to get comparables. Um, and I used a, a real estate person who happened to be a friend, but I would have had to pay for that regardless mm -hmm. um, it, had it not been a, a friend who was happy to do it. Um, I found the board to be very courteous, and so that's, that's not my, I have no beef with the office. I just think it's the right time now to look at it, what you're doing, so I, I'm redundant, so I'll sit down, unless you have anything more. Thank you. Tom, could, could you identify yourself, please? <laughs> Tom Detterman, 3601 Valley Oaks Drive. My only uh, couple comments, you know, smaller government is, is better government. And uh, even uh, John mentioned last year, it's normally done when the uh, uh, city assessor retires. So it's just, you know, commonplace to look at it now. And I, I think the petition is going to go forward. I think it's going to be successful. I think the board has a big problem of how do they get someone with that lane out there. I, I don't know, you know, I think that's a major problem. 
And I, I think the only way to solve it is if you guys would just decide, put it on the election and let the voters decide, then it's over with. Because I think the petition is going to go forward and, and be successful. So it'll just delay it farther. So I think if we just went ahead and put it on to the voters and let them decide, it'll, it'll, it'll help the selection process, I think. Because I, I don't know how you can ask someone to come with this, like, <clears throat> you know, being out there. A uh, special election? Yeah. No. It'd it have to be. 2018. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or 2008. We've got, we've, got a, we've got to hire someone for 39 yeah. days after the 30. Yeah. Thank you. Do we technically have to hire someone? I thought uh, we had talked on the conference board the other day that if there are the candidates are not maybe eligible candidates for this seat and we don't feel that they're there, that the state, um, was it the state auditor's office, whatever, will take, will assume that role? Well, when we met, we, we found that there was uh, 81 qualified individuals that are certified. Um, I think I get the numbers right. It was either 81 retired and 188 <coughs> certified or vice versa, but there's a mm -hmm. pool that's there. Um, our concern, um, speaking on behalf of Mr. Judd and Mr. DeLacy and myself, was to go forward and start bringing candidates in and interviewing them and then having the, the shroud or the cloud behind us saying, well, do I, do I take this job, accept it, and then not knowing what the future of it is. Councilmember O'Neill. Thank you. I, I think the way it was explained to us that the present assessor is retiring on the 30th of November. We have 39 days after that to get someone on board. If we don't, then the it goes to Lisa until they do. So after the 39 days, it's not the end of the world. If it takes 50 days for your group to find somebody, once you choose somebody and the, the conference board approves them, then the process of going to a referendum is much di more difficult and much, much harder to do because to undo a sitting assessor is much different than just running a referendum. So, uh, you know, I think the, the idea of whether the, this petition's been going around for right. five months. So, I mean, uh, if it's gonna go, it's gonna go. I, uh, if it has 1,500, it doesn't mean we have to get rid of the assessor. It means we have to make a decision, either abolish the office or put it on a referendum. If that comes, which I don't <coughs> think it will, then we can make that decision then. But there's a number of qualified people to do it, and I'm not gonna push the election board to pick someone in 39 days. If you take 50 days or the guy can't be here till March, I'm okay with that. I don't think we need to get boxed in right now. Any other comments? Yeah, but that was my only comment. It, I think it's hard to get a qualified candidate with this yeah. hanging over their head. Uh, Supervisor, just from your, besides smaller government, what's, what, give me some more reasons. Well, you talked to, you, you mentioned some of the other ones we should be looking at, and you have to have step one. I think this is a great first step of uh, combining services. And uh, I, I totally agree with you. I think we should be looking at other things. Well, yeah, I probably opened a can of worms with that. You know? <laughs> uh, no, no, I mean, it, it should be looked at. We well, should try, if we can just do one same. project a year together, yeah. it's more than it's been done in the future. Yeah. Well, and th that's a whole different topic, but yeah. I, yeah. I was just using that as an example. Um, but do you, I mean, like there's no, I don't have compelling reasons to do this because the cost is the same, right? Mm -hmm. Saying I, I haven't even been told what the cost is gonna be when the office is combined. No. I guess I just uh, assume you're only gonna have one department head instead of two. Yeah. So yeah. you're gonna save that money, you yeah, know. Yep. You're going to need the same staff to do the work, but I think you only need one leader instead of two yep. and two well, deputies. So you'll but, have. But if I was a leader, I would want more money because now you just <laughs> yeah. combine. Yeah. Yeah. No 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 and I would probably yourself. recommend it's having 10%. a couple of deputies because now we have the commercial and industrial that they've not been used to doing at all that are now going to be heaped in there. So I did a little bit of back uh, napkin math, and I actually I actually see more cost with a combined office with the right staff to do the complete mission for the county in the cities that exist in Clinton County. It's actually a more cost that's gonna be at the office and they're gonna levy higher. Well, we could do the same thing. We could have a city treasurer, city recorder. It just isn't the way the county government works. Yeah. 
and it, and it works in 91 counties. So, and, uh, and like I say, cities aren't adding city assessors. They're getting rid of them, as John said, as they retire. No, they just, so they just, it's it just the time to, do, to look at it. And I think if we just put it to the voters, it, then it's ended. Because yeah, you know, Illinois has, uh, well, they have county, but then they have township oh. people. Yeah, we yeah, go and then they got. So you want to talk about layers on pond yeah. layers. Well, let's talk about a state that doesn't work. Yeah. 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 So anyway, it was just my point. I, I feel it's hard for the board to really get a qualified candidate with this hanging over their head. Thank you. Member O'Neill. Thank you, Your Honor. I, there's a number of things I want to talk about, but I, while we're talking about salaries right now, I just want to make sure that my colleagues know, know the process. Normally, when you take on double the load, you're going to ask for a substantial raise. I'm not speaking for the county auditor, but let's assume that she asked for a 50% raise. That's probably logical and probably well deserved. The thing that we need to keep knowing that she will need more deputies, and she will have, probably have to hire an expert to do the assessment on commercial because she has no experience in the commercial. The problem will arise, and the big expense will arise, is that the deputy's salary is linked 80% of what the, audit, the assessor makes. So it's an automatic increase right across the board. You're going to have at least one more deputy. You're going to have an assessor that's qualified, or an assessor that's a deputy that's a, uh, good at commercial uh, assessing. And all those people are, are going to move upwards to 80% of that increased salary. So if it goes from $104,000 to $180,000, all the deputies are going to get $147,000. So there's a big, big increase. The cost the savings at best is $12,000 when you run that scenario all the way through. You take $12,000 divided by 26,000 people, it's 46 cents is going to cost our citizens to keep our home room charter and our control over it. So that's the, the one comment I'm going to make about salaries. But I got more. I got more. <laughs> well, I think we, we're going to get to let the audience prepare. Is there anybody else in the audience? Jill, if you'd like to come up, identify yourself, please. My name is Jill Himes. I'm the county assessor. Um, I would like to correct Mr. O'Neill on his comments about the time frame. I did speak to Carmen Kutzier, the Department of Revenue today. John's last day is November 30th. From there, you have seven days to request a list. When you have the list, you have 15 days to have the examining board present to the conference board your recommendation for the new uh, assessor. Okay. John told us 30 minutes. Or, yeah, or John was incorrect. Okay. So it still goes to the city. It still goes to the city clerk. Yes, okay. and if in that 15 days there is not an assessor, the uh, Julie Royce in the Department of Revenue was not available today. She's at a class. She would be the one to discuss what options you have at that point. If there are no qualified candidates that apply. You can request a special test, which is at the cost of the city. Um, there are 200 and some people on the list. You won't get 200 applicants. Um, I can guarantee you that. Um, I've talked to a lot of people. There's not a whole lot of people interested in it. Um, more people ask, wanting to know what's going on. But um, I do have commercial experience. I don't know where that came from, but with that said too, I have a deputy. He is not at 80% of my salary. I have an appraiser. They're well below my deputy. I don't have to hire another deputy. It's a choice of the assessor. It's a choice of my conference board. Um, I have always said I, if this happens, I would increase my staff by two. Um, I would bump one up to an appraiser and have two office staff. I don't 
at this point in time see hiring another deputy, but um, salaries have never been discussed. Salaries are a big topic. Um, it, there's a lot of ifs and whats. I've never been asked to present a budget to see what a combined office would do. But Jill, yeah. um, we all know what our conference board is, which is made up of two members of the school board, two mm -hmm. members, two supervisors, two council. Mm -hmm. um, what's your conference board made up of? We have the supervisors. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm school board representative from each school district in the county and the mayors from all the cities in the county. And all those mayors have one vote equally, correct? They are one unit. Mm -hmm. One city, one vote. Yes. It's just like your boards. When each mayor has his own vote or is the mayor's no. count as one vote? They're one vote. Okay, so there's only one three. Third. Oh, they're one third of the mm -hmm. one third of the total. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's the same in. As it doesn't as matter it if we have real. seven council people Correct. show up, it's still only one, one vote. vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think your levy would end up going down? You know, m my levy is went up this year because I have a commercial revaluation scheduled for 2020, I have a residential scheduled for 2022. So that's why mine went up. Otherwise, it would be back down to where it was the year before, which I think it went up, what, six, eight cents? Yeah, which is not, never very, very much. No. And in the whole realm of thing, the assessor's budget is 1% of the entire tax. Mm -hmm. Which is part of the levy. Yes, 1% the of the entire levy rate. Do you, do you live in Clinton or do you live no. out in the county? I live out of the county. You live out of the county? Mm -hmm. Where do you live? Jones County. Which is a good county. <laughs> 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 well, no one can say I don't assess my property fairly. <laughs> I point. don't assess it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Other questions of Jill? Nope. Yeah, there is, I just wanted to point out that there is a short time frame from okay. November 30th that you guys will have. Mm -hmm. Three days. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we should have started planning better when we talked about this, what, a year ago? In December. But so many things are happening. <laughs> Jeff is leaving. Yeah. Could have just combined that office then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Whoever does get this job will have a lot of work to do in a short period of time, I can tell you that. We'll worry about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so what's the council's pleasure? Is there any more discussion or is I do not. Is there a desire to take no action? And, or is there a desire to move forward to abolish the position? I guess those are your choices. Your Honor? Yes. Dad's got some. Oh. Oh, okay. you, ha you had your hat. No, thank you. <coughs> um, like I said, I did have quite a few other points. I, I, I think it's really imperative that we know what, what we're about may possibly to do and what we're about ready to maybe preserve um, as as was discussed right now uh, on our conference board the mayor is the chairman he runs a meeting he uh, is the chairman of the council he or the conference board he calls the meetings the city council maintains a third of the vote along with our colleagues from the school board and from the county it's uh, been well expressed that the three supervisors are all in favor of combining these uh, to take have control of all the parcels in the city and that w the city has about 53 percent of the uh, taxable parcels so it's a it's a big chunk of land coming in there in a short short uh, peace of mind I I'm just not ready to turn over the 
process of assessing the value of the parcels in the city of, of, of Clinton to the county. Um, we also have our, our own review board, which is in the city assessor's levy. So when we do have a problem, or one of our, more importantly, one of our citizens have a problem, they go to the city review board made up of city people. I don't, there's no guarantee that there will be 46% of the review board made up of Clinton, Clinton citizens. You could go to a review board from, made up of people entirely from Toronto, Del Mar, Good Hope, Goose Lake, and you, you know, you're not going to have a hometown review board. And I think we owe it to our citizens to, to have those, those tight-knit concerns and at least people that feel the same pain that the people in the city have. So um, that's something else we, w we would be giving up. <coughs> we, I took, along with my colleague, Mr. Gassman, and I talked to the school board president Mr. Geddes, and he polled his, his, his people. He didn't get a hold of all of them. He got a hold of the majority of them, and they are in favor of retaining the city assessor. I think we need to go back and look at the wisdom of some of our predecessors that have continually kept the city's assessor's office in here, including Lametta Wind, Daryl Smith, and Jim McGraw who found it to be a very, very important part of the school board to have a local assessment assessor. So it might be popular right now to turn around and do that. I think some of this got started on a personal level, and unfortunately that is not a good reason to, to bring this up. If that was the case or if that was the reason why, um, Mr. Moreland is retiring after many years of service, and we need to move forward. I think there are, are things we've discussed as a board, and I've discussed with some of you individually, that the things that were not well received as far as what was done at, with the assessor's office, namely when somebody applied for a permit, they were immediately assessed. In fact, before sometimes you got a nail in the, in the wood, the, the assessment was made and it was on the books. And that I think we need to look at and take some steps to eliminate that, um, mainly for residential. If you're going to go and get a permit for more than $1,500, you get a three-year abatement on that, that tax taking place. You do the assessment the day it happens, but your assessment doesn't take place for three years. If you're a business, and there's business owners, owners in here, Lynn's here, Julie's ran a business, when you expand your business for a hundred thousand or fifty thousand dollars, and you're going to bring in five more employees, it's going to take you five years to recoup that investment. So we need to abate that tax for five years, so that that entity can start receiving the benefits of the profit while they expand. Now, just uh, take Rustoli's. If they decide to buy the whole <laughs> lot next door, expand their business, and put in five or six, ten more jobs, he can't he can't pay that tax because he's he can pay the tax, but the fact is he's not paying it out of profits because he's not going to have a profit return or an RIO on, on, his, on his investment for another five years. So we need, to, we need to get rid of that problem or that perceived problem of people saying, I'm not going to paint my house because I'm just going to pay more taxes. We need to give them something back in return. So that kind of throws out that argument that um, they get taxed to sue. We, it's our obligation to take care of that. So I think right now the county has enough to chew on financially and in a lot of other areas besides taking on the all the parcels, the 9,000 parcels that we're, we're talking about. There is no commercial expert right now to do the assessments. I think it'd be the, the assessment computer stuff, the software is similar, but it is not interfaced, it is not guaranteed to work. And we all know what happens when things don't interface. We went through that eight, nine years ago. You just stop sending out bills. Or if they go out, they're wrong. And so if they're wrong, you're going to double the, 
the, the people that pro protest there, and they're going to go to a review board that's going to be overwhelmed. So that's going to expand, and that, that's going to cost more in the budget. So the whole idea of doing this because of cost saving is absolutely ludicrous. And so I, the, the time is not right now to do it. The time now is to move forward, to have the election board get someone on board, have someone in place and change the way in the working relationship between the city council and the, re and the conference board and the city assessor. I don't want to see people move away because of this. I don't want to see people uh, feel like they don't have a, a, a place to go and uh, air their differences or air their problems or if they do want a review that they don't have to go to a once removed county review board instead of the city review board. We're the biggest entity in the county. We supply the biggest portion of the taxes, and we owe it to the people of this city to maintain control of it and to take this problem. And if there are things that aren't working out, we need we need to take action to change that. Okay. Anybody? Uh, else? I just have one. Oh, that, one more. Okay. Yeah, right on the back of the page. Uh, in closing, I want to just have you sit there and think. Imagine the reaction and the absurdity if the city council was seeking to take control, total control of the county assets and our assessor run the county's assessment for them. How absurd would they think that is? Just as absurd as I think this idea is. Thank you. Council Member McGraw. I'll, I'll keep this real short. Years and years ago, the city fathers sold the water company. Suddenly, or all these years now, we've had no control over what the water company does. Yeah. I think there's some thoughts also that we probably shouldn't have sold the dock, and so I think we need to think about something this important, whether we want to get rid of it, because once you get rid of it, you don't get it back. Any other comments? Say so. I'll ask the question I, again. I guess oh, Council Member Connell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get to my question again. I know. <laughs> Sooner or later. Sooner or later. Um, I take would your take your time though. We got till 10 o'clock. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I, I guess I would like to say that this is the proper time. Um, I don't really think it's absurd, but um, consolidation of services in certain times are necessary. Um, I don't know if this is really the right time for this, like I said, but um, I do agree with Carolyn. It's, it's the proper time to talk about it. Um, doesn't mean we need to do that, you know, just get rid of it immediately. Um, yes, we are in a little time crunch with John's re retiring, but um, I, I don't think that we're looking to take over and to make this clear anything in the county either. We, we do like to work with our, our partners in the county and, and the school board. So um, I think we're, we're just starting to to work better at that now, and I think um, coming here in the future that we will have some some better partnerships going forward. So, so. second. We have a motion for no action that has a second. So, is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, could we have roll call then, please? Council Member Seeley, yes. McGraw. Okay, I'm voting as to whether we take no, no action. No action. Keep that in mind. Keep. Okay. Do, do, do All right. The All council, right. The okay. Let me. Yes. Yeah. So everybody knows a, a, a vote of no action means that the council is not going to abolish the office and things are staying the way they are. Yes. Okay. Council Member Allison. Yes. Mine. Oder. Yes. Pano. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Gasman. Yes. We'll move down to the, the final item, the mayor and council update. Um, anybody have anything? Huh? Happy birthday. Oh. Uh, you missed it. No. Mine's Sunday, no. Yours is Sunday. Yours is Sunday. Does somebody have anything? <laughs> Matt, Matt's not quite ready with this oh. yet, so anybody else have anything? Where did you get a toy like that? So i like like to make an announcement that in um, October of 16, 
the city of Clinton collected 38 tons of recycling. In our first month, in October 17, we collected 72 tons. We increased by 34 tons on single stream recycling. <laughs> And oh in addition, <laughs> we, we decreased solid waste by almost 30 tons as well. Very nice. So Very just had good. to throw a little plug in for yeah, Creighton, yeah. Reaganweather, and the what crew. And, and, and yeah. let's, let's translate that into dollars. Yeah, what's dollars? Well, and that was actually done with what? this one small truck. It's bigger in, in the public. <laughs> <laughs> Along with, um, that was one, one person, one truck versus three people, three trucks. But they're still all with the city, and they're still working hard on streets and other stuff. And that's uh, efficiency. So that's a, a lot of dollars there, um, thanks to all you guys. Oh, you didn't deal with the dollars that we saved. Saved the at tonnage. the landfill. Oh. By not, uh, yeah, by so landfill. that was uh, close to $1,500 not taking the solid waste, which we lowered. And then that also gives us about $800 on um, recycling collected. Wow. <laughs> Make way, recycling coming yeah. through. I, I thought he was going to drive it over. <laughs> 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 okay, with that, does anybody oh, have one, anything one, else? Did, did we get a very big thank you to Laura Lee just for getting us through the yes. through the big waters? Yes, she's done this a great stuff. Job for it. Thank you very much. Appreciate her expertise. So, with that, if there's nobody else, any other comments? Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Mark. Mark. Mark.